It's Sunny and Finn's Wrestling and Video Game Podcast. This week we talk about the latest gaming news, including the Red Dead Redemption 2 announcements, and we discuss the latest goings on in the wacky world of wrestling. Also, Nintendo announced the Nintendo Switch like the day after we recorded this, so we don't talk about that, but we will talk about it next week. So, yeah. Thanks, Nintendo. What's up, guys? Welcome to episode 35 of the Sunny and Finn Show. I'm Sunny, and with me, as always, is Finn Steele. Hello! How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good. This is take four. <laughs> yep. Um, the first take, we had some technical issues. Mm-hmm. The other couple of takes were fluffs from ours. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, from ourselves. Um, so now, here we are. Fresh take. Take four. And this is going to be the one. Yes, this is it. This is going to be the... The, the best podcast we've ever done. You never, Better ever. than those previous 34 episodes, this take of this show is going to be the best. Absolutely. It'll be the one for the gun. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, we're, we're surrounded by sleeping animals today in we Podcast are. HQ. We've got my little cat, Winter, Yay. who is sleeping and not interested in our podcast whatsoever. <laughs> and we have Merlin, my hamster, who is also sleeping and couldn't care less that Finn and I are sat here talking nonsense and getting frustrated over <laughs> wrong takes. Yes. That's an awesome name for that boy, uh, hamster, by the way, Merlin. Yeah, I, did, I didn't uh, I name him. I'm not I'm not that <laughs> creative. I named Winter. Oh, yeah. Um, but she has like a million nicknames, so she doesn't even get called it half the time. Uh-huh. Um, but Merlin, yeah, he's uh, he swings off the bars, <laughs> just falls over all the time. They're like, they're like the most invincible animals of all time. <laughs> yeah, aren't they? Yeah. It's, I constantly turn themselves around. Like, if I fine. fell backwards, like, you know, of something of equal <laughs> sort of size, I'd probably hurt myself. But he just gets Same. straight back up and starts swinging across the bars again. <laughs> yeah. He's like the Dolph Ziggler of the hamster world. He is. Yeah. He like he proper. He, like, he just. He's in a way he's the John Cena because he no sells. <laughs> exactly. But at yeah. the same time, he's a complete daredevil and takes massive bumps. Yeah. So he's, he's like it. he's like Dolph Cena. Dolph Cena. Nice. Maybe that's what his name should be. Maybe, Maybe. that's what we'll refer to him as. Yeah. Well, going I'm, forward. Honestly, fan art of Dolph Cena the hamster. Dolph Cena the hamster. Yeah. So if we can get some fan art. <laughs> Uh, send it to us on Twitter at SunnyFinnPC and I'll post it on Instagram where you can also find us at SunnyFinnPC. Yes. Guys, this is the Sunny and Finn Show. We are a weekly wrestling and video game podcast that posts every single Friday across podcast services everywhere. Everywhere. You almost, almost messed it up again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a close one. A close one. Very close. So I know, no, it's fine. Nearly completely fluffed it. <laughs> um, let's start the show as we always do. Yes, let's. What have you been playing on? Um, what have I been playing? I've been playing, uh, playing Bioshock, uh, still, still slowly caught my way through that on survival difficulty. Uh, God, it's hard. But How far in I? Um, I've just, uh, restored the forest after, uh, Andrew Ryan poisoned it. Okay. Uh, which is awesome. Just got my, the bee power up, it's probably my favourite one. Mm. Shooting bees at people, I love it. <laughs> um, I love that game. It's so good. Like, I, I love it so much. Like, I've, I've had, I had a couple of days off it, then I went back to it, like, a few days back. Um, just for like an hour or so, and I just you just you can't believe the game is as old as it is. I know it looks great. Seven or eight years old, maybe even longer than that. Yeah, yeah, I think so, something like that. But it's still so amazing, like the way that it. I mean, sure, it's got um, older game tendencies, and some of the mechanics are a little bit off. But the idea behind the game and the 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 stuff with the plasmids is like it's super cool, so awesome. Like the different plasmids, like everyone has their own set of plasmids that they will use and stick to throughout. The game, mm-hmm. um, and I think that's what the beauty of it is. It doesn't make you stick to. You can play the game how you really want to play that game. Exactly. It's so the atmosphere is amazing as well. And just yeah, just like the way it's designed. It's lovely. I love how eerie it is. Yeah, I love it. It's like it's not. It's not a horror game, but there are moments which are kind of horror esque. Mm, yeah, cool. I agree. Like one moment you're you're picking something up off the table and turn around, there's a spider behind you. It's like yeah, <laughs> Jesus. It yeah, always gets me. All, all three of those games are awesome, and they're all awesome in their own way. Yeah, so uh, good. I love three, and I can't wait to sort of get two, three. But um, yeah. I feel that two is un- heavily underrated. Oh yeah, I agree. I think the combat in two is better than the first one. Yeah, because I, I can agree. I can have a plasmid in one hand and the gun in the other at the same time. Yeah, whereas in the first one, I have to like switch between them. It's not. I mean, obviously the shoulder buttons control it, so it isn't you know that bad. Oh yeah, that's but, fine. Um, but when you've got both at the same time, it's that cool. Rules. Yeah. <laughs> um, so um, I'm gonna. I've never. I've never played it, but apparently the DLC for two is amazing as well. Yeah, I've had that. Too. I've never played either. Yeah. So I'm that. really excited to sort of get to that point. Yeah. Same. Anything else? What else have you been playing? Um, VR stuff. Um, playing Wayward Sky. 
Um, I remember what it's called now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's basically a point and click uh, adventure game in VR. It's third person, but like, like snap to first person when you get to like the puzzles and stuff. You can, like pick objects up and move things around with your moving controllers. Super cool. And this is like a nice looking game. It's not not too stressful. The puzzles aren't difficult. It's just like a nice game just to sit down to and enjoy mm. and just read it in. Yeah, I think the idea behind Wayward Sky is to ease you into VR. Yeah. Like, gently. So, I mean, there's 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 some amazing looking set piece bits in it. Oh, yeah. In first person. And then the, like Finn said, the, you know, the actual point and click adventure game part of it is, is so nice looking and it's almost quite relaxing to play because it it's is. not strenuous. Everything is, you know, right in front of you. We have to do sort of look and figure out where she's got to go. Exactly, yeah. Um, and it's a really good game. Um, it's one of my one of my favourite launch titles for VR, I think. Yeah, me too. It's, it's a nice one to start on if you're new to VR. Yeah, especially if you're sort of worried about how you're going to feel. Yeah. Like if you've got the demo for PlayStation VR, um, just pop it on, put Wayward Sky and it will ease you into it and show you, you know, what the machine can actually do and, you know, um, ease you into it, you know, slowly. Yeah, I agree. Um, other than that, uh, played, 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 playing a lot of uh, sports bar VR. It was mm. like a, uh, basically a sports bar in VR. <laughs> it's centered mostly, <laughs> it's, it's centered mostly around the pool, uh, aspect of it, but there's also air hockey, uh, darts, and like ski ball. It's really fun. Um, and yeah, it's just crazy. You like pick up objects and throw them around to people, play it multiplayer online. Uh, it's super cool. How does the yeah. online work? Is it good? Uh, yeah, it's really good. Um, one guy was pretending to beat me up with like a poor cue and I was like sending it, I was like going on my floor, and like bending down, no, please, no. It's really funny. Um, uh, and yeah, it's just cool. It's Matchmaking nice, good, not any sort of lag or any problems like that? Um, the AR key was a bit laggy. Um, it might just be because I had a bad connection or something, but oh yeah, it's cool. I almost fell over trying to, uh, trying to, uh, move the AR key puck because like got stuck in like the middle of the table. I leaned forward to hit it, went to put my other hand to lean on the table. It wasn't really there because <laughs> it's VR, obviously. I was like, whoa, <laughs> gee. <laughs> I broke my neck, but yeah, it's really cool. I love it. Awesome. Um, I want to brave rigs again. I think I'm going to try it, but I'm going to try it sort of not with the right stick for uh, head movement. I'm actually oh, yeah, going to use it, the yeah. head yeah. Uh, part of it, see if that sort of uh, makes me feel uh, less queasy whilst playing it. Cool. Yeah, I mean, I've had trouble with rigs. I think it's um, just about it? experimenting. Yeah, I think so. Um, but yeah, I've heard people saying they've got really sick playing rigs and. Drive Club. I don't really have a problem. The only game I got sick with was that uh, horror game, uh, Here They Lie, which is just kind of garbage and not very good. Fair enough. And not scary. <laughs> it's just, you walk forwards and open doors. That's it. Uh, Fair enough. Yeah. Um, I've been know, playing a few different things. Oh, yeah? Cool. Um, I've played a few VR bits. I've been playing mainly Headmaster. Nice. I which I absolutely that. love. It's hilarious and yeah. technically brilliant all at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, really good. It's come from a very small studio, and um, you should definitely go check that out. If you've got a VR headset, a uh, PlayStation VR headset, definitely go and have a look at that one because yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's hilarious. It's uh, a lot of fun and it's very funny at the same time as well. Yep. Um, try to play Batman again. I don't, I don't say I say try. Uh, <laughs> I am sort of uh, trying one hundred percent Batman VR. Nice uh, Batman Arkham VR. Um, I hurt my arm doing the AR Batarang challenges. Oh yeah. Like thinking that I'm some sort of hero, <laughs> specifically Batman, and uh, yeah. um, like throwing these batarangs in, as I got increasingly frustrated at you know getting 28 <laughs> or 29 when the score I needed to get the trophy was 30. Yeah. Eventually I did do it, but my, I'm feeling it still now, and that was like three days ago. So uh, nice. no, no Batman challenges for uh, me for a couple of days. <laughs> and um, straight after that. Um, there was a Riddler challenge. So when you finish the game, there's Riddler challenges to do, which is mm. cool, keeps the game fresh. And you can also unlock sort of different costumes and Batmobiles and vehicles and other stuff like that, which is great. Awesome. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, and the, the first Riddler challenge in the Batcave is a bloody Batarang challenge. So there <laughs> I am. I've just conquered this trophy. I've got 30. And then I've got to beat this Riddler challenge, which is also a Batarang AR challenge. And I was uh, like, oh my God. So I turned it off after that, but I will go back to it and I will 100% it because, uh, it's an amazing experience. Yeah. Um, I've started Rush of Blood uh, awesome. until dawn. Rush of Blood. Um, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much it as far as VR stuff goes. Cool. There's so many games to play at the minute. It's ridiculous. Yeah, so many. Um, today <laughs> I've started Rise of the Tomb Raider on PlayStation Four. Oh yeah, nice. Um, just as beautiful as it was on Xbox One. I don't really see any graphical differences. Yeah, that's right. But the game itself is uh, really amazing, and you get all the DLC bundled in with the PlayStation 4 version. So uh, if you haven't played it on Xbox One, um, and you were saving it for the PlayStation 4 for whatever reason... Like me. Um, 
then definitely go get it. It's really, really good. And it's cheap as well. Yeah, um, I would know that one. And you get a really cool looking art book, uh, which looks like sort of like a, a an, an adventurer's journal. Yeah, yeah. It's cool. Uh, it's really, really cool. So definitely go check that out. Uh, played some more Gears of War, which I'm really, really enjoying. Oh, yeah. I think it's excellent. It's the Gears of War experience that uh, I wanted. Nice. Some brilliant set pieces. Um, gameplay is Gears of War, and it's, it's great. Yeah, excellent. Um, sprinkled in with a bit of FIFA 17. I say a bit, a lot of FIFA 17. <laughs> and uh, some Forza as well, which I've lost countless hours to. Nice. Um, biggest thing I've tried this week is, uh, which was today actually, I tried the EA Access trial for Battlefield 1. Oh, ah, yeah. Uh, which of course is the new Battlefield game set in World War One, and um, it's great. It's really, really good. I've only played sort of the first, uh, like the opening sequence, uh, which was pretty breathtaking. The graphics are amazing, and um, it really hits home. And then uh, I've tried the first bit of the campaign where I was driving a tank, which also looked very nice. cool. Um, obviously, it's so different because the last few sort of war games that we've had. I mean, Call of Duty's gone beyond the realms of ridiculous now with yeah. mech suits and all this sort of craziness and battlefield although you know it's still china it's not as nuts as call of duty you still got the modern gun so um you've got your red dot sights and all that stuff but yeah. in this you don't have that you like a lot of the guns you can't even look down oh wow like the sights. so you're sort of from the hipping yeah from the hipping is that a word it is now it is now you from the hipping it. yeah he just invented it yeah it's so from the original. hipping <laughs> um, that we maybe we could bring like along with the other games that we've invented <laughs> and going to bring out. Maybe that could be our first sort of FPS. Oh, that sounds good from the hipping, yeah. From the hipping, I like it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> along so along with bits and bobs and the uh, untitled superhero game. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> from the hipping is coming to a uh, console near you very soon. Yes, but <laughs> Battlefield One is really good. Um, I would play. I would play through the campaign. Uh, I'm going to see if I can get through it on the EA Access trial. As from what I understand, it's only six or seven hours long. Nice. Um, I don't think I'll buy it, at least not yet. Yeah, same. If I was buying it, I'd be waiting for the campaign. Uh, I don't know if I want to spend all that money just for like six or seven hours of campaign. Exactly. So, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I want to keep an eye on. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Um, we do have gaming news this week. Yay. Uh, gaming news makes its welcome return. <laughs> Uh, the last couple of weeks, we've bombarded you with PlayStation VR. We have. Uh, our excitement is still there, but we have it now, so we haven't got to talk about it anymore. <laughs> yeah. We'll just talk about what we've been playing on it every week, if we have been playing on it. Exactly. Um, let's start with um, Star Wars Battlefront. Ooh. Um, there's always seemed to be news about Star Wars Battlefront. Like, it's stayed relevant for the entire year that it's been out. Nearly. It has, yeah. It's, it's been doing a good job. Unlike uh, The Division, which has just disappeared. <laughs> yeah. It might make a resurgence soon. Maybe. It might, but it's, it's I, I will tell of, you whether it does or it doesn't. Yeah, it's got a lot of work to do to do, uh, make itself relevant again. It has to meet the 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 sunny seal of approval <laughs> yeah. as to whether it's back to form or not. And when one point four update comes out, I will be back on this podcast telling you whether it sucks still because it does at the minute. It yeah. sucks. It fucking sucks, <laughs> right? Uh, or whether it's restored back to its former glory uh, when I sat there and just plowed through it for days on end. <laughs> nice. That news is coming soon. Coming soon. To a podcast near you. So Star Wars Battlefront, it has an Ultimate Edition coming out. Nice. Um, so if you were thinking of buying it, or it, you know, and it's on your radar, and for whatever reason you've not bought it in the last year, um, hold off and wait until November the 18th. It is getting an Ultimate Edition with all of the Season Pass content, including nice. the Rogue One stuff that's coming um, near the launch of the movie itself. Um, it's going to be a, it's a $40 game, so I imagine that's going to be uh, RRP for 30 in this country. Yeah, sounds about right. Um, if it doesn't hit November the 18th in this country, it definitely is in America, and it will only be a couple of days behind oh, here. Yeah. So sure. um, I think that's worth looking at, um, especially for that price with all that content. Yeah. Um, hopefully for people who do already own it, they'll reduce the season pass, and I imagine they will. Yeah, surely. Um, and also, I think... It'll come to EA Access on Xbox One around the same time because there's a, uh, a version of it coming to that as well. Nice. So, uh, good stuff. Very good. Great game as well. Yeah. So, well worth playing. A lot of fun. It's not like a serious shoot. It's not like Battlefield, for example, where it's impossible to get into multiplayer. Yeah. It is a multiplayer game and it it's like, think of it like Titanfall, which was a lot of fun to play and it's um, always a level playing field. There's, I don't know, it's just a good game. Go play it. 
Xbox One has outsold PlayStation 4 for the third month in a row. Mm, catching up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it's got a lot of catching up to do. It does. <laughs> um, but it deserves to have more people owning it. Yeah. Because it's a great console with great great exclusives. Yeah, it's had some good exclusives these past few months, which is probably why it's outsold the PS4. Mm-hmm. Like Forza, uh, Gears of War, and I'm sure other stuff as well, So I can't think of. Yeah, um, Recall, which has just come out fairly recently. Yeah, and there is some other stuff on there. There's a lot of really great games on... Um, on Xbox One. So, yeah, it's, yeah. you know, the recent price reduction and the exclusive games is a definite selling point, especially when PlayStation 4 doesn't really have that many good exclusives coming out for the remainder of the year. Yeah, Only, Last Guardian, but that's about it. The, I, I, I think that's going to be sort of a very... It's not going to be for everybody. Like, Gears, well, everyone knows yeah. what Gears of War is. Yeah, everybody Everyone right. knows what Forza is. Yeah. Because it's be, plastered all over the TV. Because, yeah, because, like, uh, I guess... Like more casual gamers don't know what the Life Garden is. They don't know what Shadow of the Glosses is or who T Micro are. Um, so yeah, a bit of a niche one that one. It is a little bit. So I mean, as far as big exclusives go, I think Xbox One has got it sort of nailed down. And also, sort of another thing that I alluded to uh, a bit earlier on was the EA Access program that Xbox One has. Um, it's twenty pound for the year, and you get access to just a, a massive amount of content, yeah. a massive amount of EA games that. Um, yeah, you can just download, play, unlock the achievements and everything, um, and it's 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 really awesome. So you know you can go and play Battlefield Four or Battlefield Hardline. You know the last few Fifas, Madden's, NHL, Plants vs Zombies, Garden Warfare One and Two. Yeah, he's played those. And um, there's you know stuff like Mirror's Edge Catalyst coming to EA Access soon, and Star Wars Battlefront. And there was something else that was big as well that I can't remember. Could <laughs> be. No, I can't remember. But, Lots of good stuff. Yeah, there's lots of good stuff. Kind of no-brainer, really, isn't it? So for £20 a year, uh, I think that's a big selling point for Xbox One. For sure. I'm surprised PS4 hasn't jumped on that, or Sony hasn't jumped on that yet. Because, like, why not have it on your system? It's a good deal. (laughs) That's a really good deal. I mean, it's, uh, you know, for £20 and all that content, it just seems, it it almost seems too good to be true. You're like, really? Is this like, I can just play all these games? Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's... It's super awesome. I've been a subscriber for a while now. Yeah. And I think it's very, very good. I think I'm not. Got some bad news. Oh. Uh, United Front Studios, who are the studio responsible for the excellent Sleeping Dogs, mm. um, is closing down. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, it's a real shame. I never like to sort of uh, see any gaming studio close down. No, um, I love Sleeping Dogs. It's like one of my favorite games from last gen, probably. Yeah, I love it. Um, it's super good. I still love it now. I have it on PS4. Nice. Um, love the characters, love the love the surrounding, L- great story as well. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, for for a big open world game, it has a really coherent story all the way through it. Yeah, the combat uh, system is great as well. Yeah, hand to hand combat system is great. I love Sounds the fun. you know the environment uh, sort <laughs> of um, kills. I guess they are. Yes, yeah, some people are just like TVs or fans or something. Yeah, <laughs> it's <awesome. laughs> so seriously brutal kills as well. <laughs> yeah, it's like, just put his head into a massive fan. <laughs> oh, I love that game so much. Yeah, it's really good. Um, you know, and it that I mean that would have been, I imagine, probably their best-selling game that they've they've made because there was so much hype going into it. Yeah, probably. And it's you know it's had a remaster job on Xbox One and PS4, mm-hmm. um, probably on PC as well, I guess. I yeah, know. I think so. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's really sad. I hope the guys that have sort of um, lost their jobs do find their feet. Yeah, and uh, so. keep making games, which I'm sure they will. Yeah, I'm sure a Surely. studio will pick them up. But um, yeah, my uh, condolences go out to those guys. Yes. Good luck. Let's move on to the big news. The big news of the week. Okay. Um, Rockstar have been teasing us for the last few days. On Sunday, they uh, put up a picture of the Rockstar logo with a red background that suspiciously looked like the red background from the front cover of Red Dead Redemption. Hmm. Um, on Monday, they put another picture on, this time of a, uh, a sunset with cowboy silhouettes. Huh. Cowboy DLC for uh, tabletop, tabletop, uh, table tennis, well, table tennis. Well, that's what I was hoping it was going to be. That <laughs> yeah. or uh, manhunt. Yeah, <laughs> table tennis two uh, slash manhunt. Uh, Maybe even a crazy sequel West. to the Warriors. <laughs> oh yeah, why not? An original sequel to the Warriors <laughs> yes. made by Rockstar. Set in Wild West. <laughs> These were the things that I thought they might be. Yeah. Um, but on Tuesday they officially announced Red Dead Redemption <gasps> Two. My God, don't believe it. So a sequel to the the excellent open world western game. Yeah, that, we knew we knew it was coming eventually. <laughs> yeah, we knew it was going to come. Obviously, a lot of buzz has been about even the first game recently because um, it's been backwards compatible 
on Xbox One. Yep, that's which awesome. Is great. I, you know, I got it for like two pound thirty nine on Xbox One because Bargain. it was like in the sale when nice. it was announced. So I was like jumping straight on that. Yeah, definitely. Where's Skate Three? Um, <laughs> yeah, Skate Three would be a good one. I bought it ages ago. Oh yeah, yeah, still not there. Yeah. Fuming. That's nice. Um, but I'm excited for Red Dead Redemption Two. It's coming fall 2017, so we're still a, a year away from it. <laughs> yeah, it might have announced a bit too early, maybe. Um, I like how Bethesda did it with uh, Fallout 4. There's Fallout what's coming out in like two months. It's like everyone got super hyped for it in their two months and it came out and it's awesome and yeah. But now I mean, we've got to wait an entire year for it to come out. It's like by then it might be. I mean, the hype train know. was well and truly sort of in motion oh, even yeah. when they put that Rockstar logo up. Yeah, it seems that Rockstar logo came up. It's like, it exploded. It's like, oh my God, it's never done to Yeah, and it's craziness. Yeah. Hello, Winter. What's up? <laughs> Do you want to go out? Winter has awoken. Winter has awoken and she's telling me something. She's in she's in action stance, like she wants to come up here, but there's a mic stand in her way. Oh no. And uh, she's looking at me like, um, you're either going to feed me or you're going to let me out. And I think it's the uh, the former. No. Yeah, the former. Yes. Um, <laughs> so I'll go and do that now. You, uh, you keep talking about Red Dead Redemption. Podcast. Pause. Podcast. Resume. I'm back. Um, little update. The cat is out. Right, okay. She meowed at me on the way out, so I don't think she's very happy. Oh, uh, oh, we disturbed her slumber. <laughs> we did. So now she's gone out to play <laughs> until food time. Oh, giddy. Red Dead Redemption 2. Yeah, I think, um, you know, it is, it is a long way away. Like yes. I, said, I mean, the hype train, the hype tornado <laughs> is very much in yeah. motion at the minute. And it is. Uh, people are just are caught up in it and going crazy over it. Yeah, but straight for that tornado. It got sucked up. Yeah. All the I mean, hype. Maybe Rockstar has just sent a warning to other developers to just, you know what, don't just bring don't, any games yeah. out next yeah. year, next fall. Just no point, yeah. Because we, we, nobody's going to play anything <laughs> but this. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's only been announced for PS4 game. and Xbox One. Interesting, yeah. Um, DJ 5 didn't come out on PC for months after the console release, so mm. makes sense. In fact, Red Dead Redemption never did come out on PC. So maybe we'll yeah. never see it on PC, who knows? Good. <laughs> yeah, screw PC games. PC gaming sucks. <laughs> no, we're going to have so much hate. Mueller hate us. <laughs> Guess what? You don't care. No. Nope. No. <laughs> PC gaming sucks. We're gonna get yelled at on the internet. Look, we well, all get yelled at. I'm, I'm, I'm cool with PC gamers. Listen, I used to be one of you. Okay, I'm one of you guys. I used to be anyway until I got annoyed with it. No, you've already got. <laughs> you've already got haters on the internet. Well, I got, yeah, there's two people. <laughs> hey, it's got to start somewhere. <laughs> That's true. And if it starts with those two people giving you crap about that Toy Odyssey place <laughs> that you did, uh, haters gonna hate. How many views has that had now? Like 15,000. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> well, if two people out of 15,000 hate you, then I think that's a good going. Uh, yeah. It's a good ratio. Yeah, it's, I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's pretty much all I've got as far as gaming news goes. Got anything you want to share? Um, I think that's about it as well. Man, this podcast is cursed this week. We've it had is. so many problems already. Like We've had mm-hmm. four or five takes. Yeah. Uh, we've had to... Cut and change because there was some microphone issues halfway through this take. Uh, yep, when the microphone got out, so that's great. Yeah, and then <laughs> uh, I had to let winter out. Yep. Uh, so that I'll be glad to see the back end of this podcast. <laughs> yeah, this podcast is cursed. Yeah, this week's podcast, although I proclaimed at the beginning of this take that it would be the greatest <laughs> podcast of all time. Yes, it is. Um, and it still has the potential to be. I just, I can't help but feel that it's a, um, a little bit marred. <laughs> it is a bit, well, it's... Cut out and all, all these weirdness. problems that we've had this week. We've never yeah. had problems like this before. We've not, no, it's super weird. It's like we had, because we had that top 10. Do we mention that start this take? I can't remember. But, I don't know anymore. <laughs> yeah, I don't that. know. I'm like, I'm so lost in takes. So I have no <laughs> I idea. Yeah, but for the case we didn't, uh, we recorded the top 10 with our friend Gaming Mule from YouTube uh, for top 10 um, games. games of the current generation. That's it. And it was awesome, but there's some super weird echo going through the whole thing and it's like got ruined basically. So that sucks. We'll record that again, for sure, because it's super fun to do. Yeah, it was really good. Re- really, really good fun. Uh, we just basically spent an hour talking about our favourite games, and it was a really good time. So yeah. uh, uh, apologies uh, that that was promised and not delivered as of yeah. yet, but um, we will get it done. I mean, it took us an hour or so on a Saturday afternoon. I'm sure we can spare that time again. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, let's move on to uh, the wrestling side of our podcast. Okay. <clears throat> I thought Hell in a Cell was this Sunday. It's not. Yeah, I did too. But you're not. It's two weeks away. Ooh, that's too much build up isn't it what, it's, yeah it's a bit what, what are Sundays without pay-per-views now? I know right like, I'm just so used to having a pay-per-view on a Sunday yeah to be sitting there in my house alone not knowing what to do it's like, huh. yeah oh, do it should be streaming <laughs> pay-per-views maybe yeah. now I'm not yeah. 
Um, so Hell in a Cell is still a couple of weeks away. Yeah. Uh, Raw was tough for me this week to get through. Yeah. Uh, I <laughs> didn't really enjoy it, and I thought it was mainly... Uh, well, quite frankly, I thought it was pretty crap apart from uh, the bit at the end. But uh, if you want to talk to uh, talk to the world about <laughs> this week's episode of Raw, and uh, I'll chime in. Yeah, it was it was it was all right. Um, it started off with uh, Kevin Owens and Joe in the ring. It was probably the best way to start it because they're awesome. Um, Seth Rollins then basically hyping up the match for uh, Hell in the Cell. Uh, Owens is in a suit. Um, Joe goes in his pants, so. And a scarf. And the pants and the scarf, yep. So clearly he was going to be fighting at some point. Um, <laughs> and surely enough, Seth came down and challenged Chris Joker to a rematch from last week, which happened right there and then. Um, he called him Sparkle Crotch, which is kind of funny, I guess. Um, I knew that he was trying to get the crowd to chant oh, it yeah. just from the <laughs> sheer amount of times that he said Sparkle Crotch. Yeah, Sparkle Butt would, would have been funnier. Um, but yeah, so they had a match. It was fine. Um, it was alright, actually. Pretty good, actually. Good, pretty good match. Probably the match of the night. Um, Kevin Owens was uh, like pulling the ropes away from uh, Seth while he was in the water joke, which I thought was cool. Uh, the referee ended up noticing and he has to let go and all that. And uh, yeah, Seth counted a code, code breaker into the pedigree and won. Good, I guess. For sure. <laughs> yeah, it was fine. Seth wins. Um, <laughs> after that, the camera panned to the governor of Colorado for some reason and he got booed. And that was a weird thing. Finally, he got invited there by Goldberg. Shrug. Um, Honestly, I didn't know that was the governor of Colorado. I, this is how yeah. much of Raw I watched this week. I <laughs> pretty much skipped a lot of most of it to get to the Goldberg Park, so that was the only bit I was really interested in. <laughs> because I know that Sasha and Charlotte are going to make history, in quotes, uh, <laughs> at Hell in a Cell, and we know what's coming there. We know that Kevin Owens is fighting Seth Rollins, and we know that Roman Reigns is fighting Rusev. Mm-hmm. I'm bored of it. I wish Hell in a Cell was this Sunday so yep. that we could move on. Yep, me too. And uh, that's basically why I skipped a lot of Raw this week. You can call me uh, <laughs> not a real fan or whatever, but when you've watched as much wrestling as I have over the years, you know what these shows are all about. Pretty much. Um, so you don't need to see them. Yeah, it was. Yeah, the wrestling this week wasn't that great, apart from a couple of things. Um, I watched the Cruiserweight match as well. Yeah, Cruiserweight match was good. Uh, so yeah, there's a couple of interviews with Lita interviewing uh, Charlotte and uh, Chatterbanks, which were just kind of standard. I'm going to beat the other person. No, I'm going to bin the other. Mm. It's fine. Um, there's a match with Golden Truth and Mark Henry versus the Shining Stars and Titus O'Neil. Great. Why, why is that? Uh, it's crap. Um, this Titus O'Neil rebranding thing is crap. It's so bad. It's done. What's Mark Henry there? He, he, Mark Henry literally did one move. He got tagged in the end of the match, did the World's Longest Slam, that was it. Why was did he there? win? Oh, uh, yeah, he didn't win. Right. Stupid. Great. <laughs> I uh, knew they had a funny... Mark technique. Henry was such a destroyer. I'm sorry to he interrupt. He was, yeah, but I agree. Like, when he was the SmackDown champion, he was an absolute destroyer. The yeah. Hall of Pain stuff was great. It's awesome. Um, but like when he lost the title, it was literally a steady decline for him. And now it's, he's tagging up with the Golden Truth against Titus O'Neil for yeah. no reason at all. It's just some random babyface who doesn't do anything anymore. But he's even a baby face anymore. The crowd don't really... Well, the crowd don't I mean, get at least away. what we hear on the TV is no response. I mean, yeah. WWE tampered with the crowd noises and whatever. That's true. Uh, live reactions obviously very different, but um, so they need to do something to make Mike Henry relevant if he's going to stay around. Otherwise, he may as well retire. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Poor Mark. Yeah, um, poor Mark. So yeah, so it's a backstage bit with Joko and Kevin Owens, who's kind of like yelling at each other, saying, oh, I told you not to come down to my match and stuff and whatever. You cost me that match, blah, blah, blah. And then uh, Steph came down and shouted at them both, turning heel, I guess. Uh, I don't even know if Steph's a heel or fate at the minute. It's hard to keep track. I never know. I, I, yeah. I, just, I just don't, I just don't get it. You seem to turn like every week. It's like one minute is a heel and one minute is a face. One uh, minute she's high-fiving Mick Foley and another minute she's <laughs> berating him for doing something wrong. And it's like, yeah. well, okay, well, where's the consistency here? It's a schizophrenic weirdo. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I hate when she tries to be a face anyway. It's so cringeworthy. Oh god, yeah. So she's just like she's she's trying too hard. She is. It's not good. No, uh, it sucks. There's a pretty uh, pretty decent match. It's probably a decent match between uh, Seamus and Biggie. Uh, Cesaro was uh, on Facebook Live with his phone like uh, Seamus did last week. Um, it's ended up costing Seamus a match because it distracted. And Biggie won with another roll up, just like uh, Kofi did last week to Cesaro. Uh, it's a decent match up until then. <clears throat> The problem I have with this is that next week we're going to have Cesaro and Sheamus versus The New Day. Mm -hmm. But then I anticipate that at Hell in a Cell, they're going to have a title match. Yeah. But this is... I don't want to see that next week. I want to see it at the pay-per-view. Yeah, it's like like they did with um, Rusev and Roman that time, isn't it? Yeah. Like, oh, we're going to give you uh, this pay-per-view match for for no reason at all on Raw. It's like, well... 
Why? No, no, save it. <laughs> yeah. Like, none of us want this until the pay-per-view. That's the point of building towards a pay-per-view. Otherwise, Raw may as well be your pay-per-view <laughs> and you may as well not have Hell in a Cell. Exactly. It's super weird. Don't give your pay-per-view matches away. That's the point of it. That was the... It's like it's like the big fight thing. It's like boxers don't fight in the in the weigh-in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like they they save it until somebody's paid seventeen pound to watch it. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, bizarre. Yeah, so that's why you have build-up. It just it baffles me. Yeah, same. Um, as a match between Bo Dallas versus Neville, which uh, Bo actually won. He actually won a match against Neville. Poor Neville. This Bo push is interesting to me. I wish yeah. they would sort of detach him from Curtis Axel. Well, he did attack, attack Curtis Axel after the match, so... Oh, right, there we go. Let's see, I wish. told you I didn't watch it. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Yeah. So, yeah, Curtis Axel was like, on the on the uh, corner, turn back on, celebrating, yeah, yeah, Bo won. And then Bo's, like, hitting the back and, like, hitting with the, his finisher. Good, because Bo has a lot of potential and has been wasted um, doing the social outcast nonsense, but now he's sort of got an aggressive side to him. I like that a lot. Yeah, And I too. think um, this could be very cool going forward. Um, I don't know where it's going, Um because while Roman Reigns has got a stranglehold on the US title, there's no way that someone like Bo Dallas can go for that. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of a downside. Which is it? why I don't like people like Roman Reigns, who can clearly go for the world title. He's a former world champion. Yeah. Why I don't feel like people like him, maybe even Rusev to a degree, mm. um, should really hold the US title. I think it should be for um, real mid-carders, like, yeah. like Bo Miz Dallas. Bob Ziggler. Yeah. Dolph Ziggler, Miz, them, them sort of people. Yeah. Um. You know, Rusev is good enough to be the world champion, and I'm sure he will be one day. Yeah. Um. Roman Reigns has already been the world champion. I imagine he's took a step down because of the suspension thing. Yeah. Um. I don't know. I think it needs to go back to being a true mid card championship because, um, Rusev and Reigns are treated like main eventers, which is what they are. So they shouldn't have that. It's like when main eventers have the tag team titles. I hate that. Yeah, that's weird. Like when John Cena and Batista won it that time. Yeah, or uh, Triple H and Stone Cold when they had it. It's yeah. like, what other tag team can realistically beat these two guys? <laughs> exactly, like, yeah. The only reason they're going to lose it is because they're going to break up. Yeah. And it just... It's dumb. You know, I, 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 I think it should be a mid-card title again. Agreed. Um, at least it made sense when John Cena had it because he was like having people come down every week challenging him. That kind of made yeah. an exciting moment. But then like when Kevin Owens beat him, yeah, like, that was huge. Kevin Owens was then a mid card guy, and it was fine because then Kevin Owens could fight all the mid card guys. Yeah, but like Cena, um, you know, he was plowing through people every week until a worthy challenger came along. Yeah, um, I don't see that that can possibly be the case because you know after Hell in a Cell, what happens to Rusev or Roman Reigns depending on who wins? Yeah, it's a weird one. Strange. Uh, yeah, what else do we have? Uh, we had Bailey versus Dana Brooke. Um, I actually thought Dana was improving a bit. Until the end of the end of the, ma- uh, the end of the match, where she kind of botched the finish, uh, I think she's, I think she's supposed to put her foot on the ropes to pin Bailey, but she missed the ropes. She's just going to pin her off like a nothing hair pull slam move. Uh, Poor Dana. Yeah. Weird. I like this food. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Um, I hope Dana gets better because <laughs> um, he did look like she was improving in the ring. It's very vicious and all that. Um, people love Bailey, so. People do want to see this match, I think, but Dana just needs to get her act together, I think. Yeah, and I think the fact that she's going against Bailey is a really good way f- to get heat on Dana. Yeah, I agree. Um, because obviously they want to, she's not likable. No. Unfortunately, I mean, I do <laughs> like Dana, but yeah, I, mean, I, like I think for the wrong reasons, because I feel sorry for her a little bit. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. So I'm rooting for her in a please just get better sort yeah. of way, as opposed to Bailey, where she's a big baby face and stuff. But yeah. um, Dana's a good look, a big muscly lady. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think she's toned down a little since uh, her early NXT days. I think she looks yeah, less muscly. Yeah. Um. I don't know. Maybe WWE told her to. Uh, who, who knows? Yeah. Maybe. But, um. I like. I do like this feud. I want Dana to get better. I think Bailey will come out of it. You know, the winner, of course. Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, unless this goes on for a bit longer, because you know Sasha and Charlotte are too busy making history week in week out. <laughs> yeah. I know we, that's got to change soon. Yeah. Because you can't have two women going for the women's title in a women's revolution. Yeah, just getting back and forth. Because two women is in a revolution. Not really, no. Um, but yeah, I, th- I think Bailey or I'm going to, I might go out on a limb here and say Bailey's going to win that title at WrestleMania next year. Cool. Yeah. Good, good prediction. Yeah. I like it. We'll, well, we'll tag that on to next year's predictions. Yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> right. So what else do we have? Um, oh, um, Braun Strowman beats the mild high trio. Three men this week, which is what you said last week would happen. And you're right. Um, at one point, he threw, literally threw one of the guys over the ropes 
by his head onto the other two guys, which is crazy and awesome. Um, <laughs> one, one, Corey with a quote of the night saying one of the guys looked like no way Jose's less successful brother, perhaps not Jorge. <laughs> that was very funny because <laughs> he had like the crazy hair and the beard. Right. Uh, it's all very funny. Um, and yeah, again, once again, one came on the microphone after the match and said, I'm going to come back there and get real fights. And he got interrupted by Sami Zayn. Eee, poor Sami. Oh, no. Because <laughs> Sami's going to lose this. Because <laughs> no way Sami's going to win. Uh. What are you doing with Sami? Yeah. This is, again, this is a reason to see Sami would be perfect for the US title. Yeah, I agree. He would be. Or move him to SmackDown. Yeah. Because at this be point, like, like, same same for Neville. Like, they're damaged now. Yeah. Like, I understand you push him by, but you don't need to push him by having him beat Neville. Exactly, yeah. That's a bit weird. Um... Sammy needs something to make him uh, a realistic challenger for anything. Yeah. Because um, he's not going to beat Braun. No. Uh, or if he does, then great. But at but the same time, I don't want to see Braun that. lose his momentum. Yeah. I'd rather see Braun go up against somebody. And I hate to say it, I would like to see him go up against Mark Henry or yeah. Big Show yeah. or you know someone of equal intimidation. Like Sammy could still get squashed. I mean, he's way smaller than Braun. Yeah, seriously. I don't like it. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad. I'm looking forward to seeing like Braun have an actual match with an actual opponent. But yeah, Sammy's. Yeah. I want to see Sammy win matches every week and we have have titles and all that. And build on awesome matches every week. Yeah, but, it's uh, like we don't know what to do with you. So here's a tag team match. We don't know what to do with you. Here's a squash match. We don't know what to do with you. Uh, we're gonna put you up against Braun. Yeah, that's not that's not good in my opinion. I think I yeah. think that's very poor booking. Yeah, I agree. Poor Sammy. Yeah. I mean, I've got no problem with the Braun thing. I think that what Braun's doing at the minute is really good. Yeah, yeah. Um, not against Sammy. But there's a I right like way to do it. <laughs> yeah. not, and Sammy is not the right way to go. Not for me, anyway. Um, I think someone like... Again, I'm going back to the US title here, but it's a mid-card championship, and Sammy is firmly in that mid-card. Yeah. You could push Braun to to the main event. Yeah. Like, you know, a few more months down the road. It's like when Great Carly came into WWE, beat The Undertaker for the world title. And he was <laughs> yeah. believable because he was a big monster. He was. And then all of a sudden he's, uh, you know, later on down the line, he's a Punjab playboy and he's yes. dancing and kissing women every week. And it's yeah. like, this is, this is stupid. Like, as a monster, he's amazing. Do you think? Like, as, nice dab. Um, <laughs> unintended dab there. <laughs> unintentional dab with the sneeze. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, like Great Carly. Great as a monster, rubbish as a mid carder. Like Braun Strowman could be the main uh, a main event guy. Yeah, I agree. With the right push, yep. don't give him the US again. Don't give him the US title. Yeah, because he's going to beat him. Yeah, it's like yeah, it's, it's it, I don't know. We'll we'll see. Yeah, we'll see um, where this goes. We'll see where this goes. But um, either way, I don't think it's good for either guy. No, I don't think it's good for Braun to lose to Sammy, and I don't think it's Sammy. It's good for Sammy to lose to Braun. Yeah, like so. where someone like Big Show or Mark Henry, they've been around the block, so it's time for them to pass the torch. Exactly. Yeah, it's like if if Big Show loses a match, nobody cares. If Sammy loses a match, yeah. it's like oh man. But it's it's believable, so they can stand eye to eye. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. And they they could hype it as a big fight between two big guys, and if Braun comes out of it and like. You know, says, "Oh, I'm going to retire, Big Show," and Big Show is actually going to retire. Yeah. And you know, that's great. People will want to see it. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, I've enjoyed the booking of Braun until now. Yeah, but, uh, I'll reserve judgment until what happens in the fallout of it. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, after that, we had a really weird Rusev segment. Um, we were meeting the Rusev family. Um, they had like, pictures of his family and stuff. It was super weird. Uh, yeah, it sucks. <laughs> this is why Helen and should be this Sunday. Yeah, Rubbish exactly. like this that they're having to fill time with. Yeah, it's super weird. <laughs> We've um, run out of things to do with these guys because they've done it for four weeks. <laughs> yeah. That's me um, and his family. We... Yeah, so Roman interrupted because of course he did. Yeah. Um, he said, my family is the Roman Empire. <laughs> Boo! <Yeah. Good> <laughs> what did you expect to happen, Roman? You can't do that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, there, there is no such thing as the Roman Empire. Yeah. Like in WWE, no one likes you. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that was <laughs> dumb. Um, so yeah, Lana ended up slapping Roman and then Rooster kicked him in the head and yeah, Rooster got the upper hand and beat him up at the steps and stuff. But the accolade on the steel steps, which I'm not quite sure why that would hurt more, but... Yeah, it, it just does. That's WWE <laughs> logic for you. Yeah. Anything that's done on those steel steps, even a submission... <laughs> yeah, it hurts more. It hurts more. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that was dumb. 
Uh, maybe no looking forward to that feud no more. You don't really care about the match at all anymore. <laughs> You've seen it two times already. Yeah, and I especially don't need to see it in Hell in a Cell. Yeah, it's like, I mean the Hell in a Cell glosses it over a yeah. little bit. Um, again, too much build up, too much nonsense, too many matches. Yeah. This is if you think about it, we're in what we're in the back end of October when Hell in a Cell rolls around. This has been going on before SummerSlam. Yep, too so, long, way too long. Too long, yeah. Uh, it needs to end at Hell in a Cell. If it doesn't, then uh, my interest in Raw is going to be even less than it is now. <laughs> yeah, same. E. Um, so yeah, we had, that, ooh, had a disappointing match with uh, Big Cass versus Carl Anderson, which Big Cass won in like two minutes, which isn't very fair for poor. Uh, yeah, I noticed Anderson. this on my skim through. Yeah. Um, this they've been booking the club really strong the last few weeks, having them come out and destroying people. Yeah. So this makes no sense to me. I don't. No, because like. Carl Anderson was a big deal in like Japan. He's like machine gun Carl Anderson. It's awesome. And now he's just getting squashed by bloody big cast every week. It's like, uh, yeah, it doing? just doesn't make sense, especially when they've been doing really well. Like they've been doing a really good job of pushing the, the club. Yeah, exactly. You're still calling them that? I, who knows? Okay. It's so clear. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. AJ's still wearing the, the, the gear. He is, yeah. And it looks like the club is still wearing their gear, so. Hmm. Shrug. They'll come together with Survivor Series, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, Hmm, yeah, I'm not a fan of this. Either the club are monsters and destroying people, or they shouldn't be there at all. What's the yeah. point? I hope this ends up with uh, in, um, Big Cass and Enzo losing to the club at uh, Hell in a Cell or wherever they end up fighting. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm kind, of, I'm kind of getting sick of Big Cass and Enzo, to be honest with you. Like I, for the first time this week, when the music hit, I just kind of rolled my eyes. It's like, oh, this again. Yeah, uh, um... Crowder obviously still eating it up, but yeah. you know this, the the reaction this week wasn't as strong. No, because I, I, I do like them as you know performers, but it's kind of the same thing every week. It's going to get stale eventually. Mm. Yeah, it's, uh, it's it is a tough one because they're two very likable guys, mm. and the as a but they've not done anything good with them since they've even come up to the main roster. It's yeah. like they're there to talk. Not to wrestle, sort of thing. Yeah, pretty much, the best yeah. thing that's happened with them since they came up was Big Cass being in that um, oh, yeah. main event. Yeah, that was a cool idea. It's fucking decent. Um, but yeah, we'll see how that continues, I guess. Club needs to win. Club needs to win, but you know, at the same time, you ha- you feel that Enzo and Cass need a big win. Yeah. Because should they go for the tag team titles? Mm. Like, we, we could no. you know, we could go <laughs> round with this all day because it's 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 mind block boggling booking really because and it's across the board it isn't just with this like we were talking about Braun Strowman and Sami Zayn it's like okay well the club needs to win mm-hmm. because the club I mean the club should have won the tag team titles by now they should have yeah. and that was I don't know why they're keeping them on the new day so long whether there's a problem with someone in demolition that they need to take the record off them for whatever reason <laughs> maybe they seem to be into that at the minute breaking yeah. records it's only a matter of time before CM Punk's record is broken or whatever <laughs> okay, yeah. um you know, like Nikki broke the the Divas Championship That's true. Um, record and all that sort of stuff. Divas. Divas. It's just, across the board, it's weird booking because Enzo and Cass haven't really done anything of worth since they came to the main roster. That's true. Um, apart from sell t-shirts and do cats phrases. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the club, uh, they started off really good and then they broke the club up. AJ went to SmackDown, obviously he's doing great things and then the club have done... Nothing but lose to New Day. Yeah. Or nothing but lose. And the last couple of weeks, you think there's a there's a light at the end of the tunnel for the club, but they're coming out and they're squat, they're beating people up and you know, all this sort of stuff, winning matches convincingly. And then this happens. It's like one step forward, two, two steps, steps back, back. Yeah. all the time. And now they're putting two teams that need wins against each other, and it's like, yeah. whoa. They could have had a, like a decent match at least, a little, little bit of back and forth, uh, like build up some excitement, but no, it's like literally two minutes long. It's nothing. And this is why Same. it's so tough to get excited for Raw every week. Yeah. Uh, you know, when this this is the kind of thing that's going on. Yeah, I agree. It but can only get better. Can get we better. say this all the time, how much longer can we say it for? <laughs> yeah. Speaking of, uh, after that we had a Cruiserweight match. Before, before that we had some backstage uh, stuff with uh, TJ Perkins talking to everyone. It's very good to everyone just uh, chatting up. Yeah. Yeah. So the match was uh, Brian Kendrick, Drew, Ga- Drew Gulak and Tony Nice versus TJ Perkins, Rich One and Cedric Alexander. Uh, another good match. All guys look great. Uh, the crowd went to win it again because they suck. Um, Kendrick ended up winning with the captain took on Rich One. Um, I thought it was cool and how like I think TJ Perkins was trying to get in the ring and want they like Tony Nice are holding him back or something. So that was cool. Um, 
And yeah, I love bloody Brian Kendrick quotes too, isn't it? Love yeah, he's character. awesome. Yeah. Um, I like the cruiserweights a lot. Mm. I hate that the crowd isn't into it. Me too. But I think the life has been sucked out of the crowd yeah, by this point. So yeah. you put the cruiserweights on and when you've got Goldberg coming up next and it's oh, like, yeah. okay, well, the crowd want to see Goldberg now. Yeah. Like they've, they've had to sit through two and a bit hours of fairly average TV. Mm. Um, you know, and, you know, and, and the show, if you're the live crowd, you know, so the, the, the live crowd is, has just been taken out of it. Maybe the cruiserweight should go on first every week. Yeah, I was going to say that actually. Set the time for the first. show. Give them an exciting match because they're doing cool stuff. Like, and you get oohs and ahs from yeah. you know, Rich Swan flipping and landing on his feet and Cedric <laughs> flying all over the place and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So set the crowd up with that. Yeah, exactly. Give them the cruiserweights first. Give, give them, you know, exciting. Get them pumped up for the rest of the night and then do all of your nonsense booking. Yeah, exactly. I agree. I completely agree. Um, but yeah, great match otherwise. Because otherwise the, the cruiserweight is going to get lost in the shuffle. Vince McMahon's going to be like, well, is anyone actually really into the cruiserweights? Is it something that should just yeah. be on NXT maybe or something like that? And, you know, people, you know, we're going to start seeing it less and less, which I don't think is the way to, well, it's just definitely not the way to no. go at all. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, I need to give them a chance to shine, like get people interested. And yeah, I think the one first would be a good idea. Yeah, and, I, sure. and I'm fine if you're going to sort of see <laughs> You know, because th- what they're trying to do here is separate the heels from the faces in the cruiserweight division and introduce that to the crowd. So, yeah. uh, obviously, Tony Nice and Drew Gulak and um, Brian Kendrick, they're the heels. Mm-hmm. Cedric, who is very over, Rich Swan, who's very over, and TJ Perkins, who is the obvious favourite. Yeah. You know, they're, they're, they're the faces, fine. But now, and I'm, f- I'm fine with them being, you know, the six man tag is a really good way to start. Yeah. But put it in a part of the show where people aren't going to be disinterested. Yeah. Exactly. We've got, let's take a proper coming next and that's it. All that garbage beforehand. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. Uh, basically, all that's left is, uh, Goldberg. Um, yeah, the awesome entrance coming backstage. All of, everyone's there, like, there cheering one and on stuff, which is awesome. And yep. yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This fireworks, like, you used to have WCW. Yeah, he did um, it. He did it awesome as well. It looked yeah. amazing. I actually had goosebumps. I was really sort of excited for him. It was super cool. Yeah, um, crowd loved it. Crowd was chanting his name constantly. Uh, Goldberg's obviously overwhelmed by the response. I I genuinely think Goldberg thought that people would have forgotten who he was. <laughs> like he said in the ESPN interviews, like um, you know, there's a there's a generation of kids now who don't know who I am. Yeah, but but uh, you know, didn't like it. <laughs> didn't sound like it. Certainly didn't look like it or sound like it. And um, you could tell he was uh, visibly overwhelmed with it, and I thought it was really nice. Somebody who I thought did not give a shit about professional wrestling yeah. to come back and see that reaction. Like there was one point where there were ch- people were chanting Goldberg, mm-hmm. uh, and then he was walking around the ring, and he like he said like he, he went, "It's time." He went, "I think it's time." Nice. And uh, I thought that was really good, and I, I love seeing that sort of passion. Yeah, I do. That's from good. people who had probably lost the passion for the business. To yeah. see it sort of come back because of that one big reaction. Yeah. It's like, wow, okay. Good stuff. I'm still relevant. Yeah. Awesome. Um, Delivered a great promo as well. He did, yeah. He accepted Heyman's challenge. Uh, he said, not only is Brock Lesnar next, but you're last. Yeah. That's what was cool. So obviously Goldberg's, we're only going to see him once and once only. Yeah. Uh, in a match at least. I think he'll sort of be on Raw in the bill. So this is this will happen in Survivor Series. I right, would imagine. Sure. Too late for Hell in a Cell now. Yeah. Fine. You need more build up. You need some really good build up. Yeah. Um, and I think we will get that. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Um. I don't know. Maybe I'm hoping that like you'll have you know, he'll enjoy the match enough that he'll hold on a bit more. Maybe have a few more matches with some guys. Maybe Goldberg versus John Cena would be cool. I don't know. Just saying. Um. But yeah, who knows? Goldberg versus Sin Cara. Yeah, oh, that picture that you uh, retweeted, which <laughs> I loved. <laughs> yeah. Uh. What was it? It's like, um, the, the best shoot fighter in WWE <laughs> and Goldberg. Yeah. <laughs> the, <Andrew> Sinkara, <laughs> the ultimate fighter and uh, Bill Goldberg. <laughs> yeah, love I love that. that. So good. Um, but Raw this week, very disappointing. Yeah. Um, booking is mind blowing at the minute and Hell in a Cell should be this week. Yep, agreed. Um, this week is this Smackdown, which I literally watched this morning, minutes before coming to this, uh, uh, to do this podcast. Um, and it was uh, fine. Yeah, mm. just fine. Just fine, yeah. Um, Start off with uh, Randy Orton in the ring. I uh, think the spooky stuff about Bray Wyatt. Because it's Halloween, I guess. And, um, <laughs> and, is, that, is that what you think is going on here? Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. It's too, too spooky for me. Um, is there a SmackDown pay-per-view before Survivor Series? I don't think so. That's Because think... this is a lot of build-up now. Yeah. When's See, Survivor Series? Let's find out. 20th of November, my birthday. Oh, 
Oh yeah, I got this, yeah. Awesome. Um, so yeah, I'd imagine there's probably not going to be one before then. Because in two weeks, it'll be the end of November, October. Hmm. It'd be, it'd be t- so it'd what be I think might happen, you might have like a, a, an episode of Smackdown that acts like a pay-per-view. Yeah, because maybe. then what we're going to have to do is start building towards Survivor Series and getting the teams together. Yeah. So that, that could be quite interesting, the build-up to that, from both Raw and Smackdown perspective. Yes. Because um, you'll have that sort of dynamic of um, faces and heels coming together to be teams and all that sort of build-up. So that could be quite interesting. Um, remains to be seen whether it is or isn't interesting or not. Um, but uh, that that could be uh, that could potentially be quite good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So uh, Helen Sell, then it's NXT, NXT TakeOver. But uh, yeah, after that, it's Survivor Series. So. NXT TakeOver is November the 19th, isn't it? It is, yeah. It's day before Survivor Series. Cool. Two streams that weekend, one on my birthday. Sweet. Awesome. <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah. Right. So, uh, yeah, after this opening segment, uh, Randy Orton had a match with Luke Harper. Uh, during the match, Bray Wyatt came down in a coffin. Um, sure. <laughs> spoopy. Uh, yeah, Bray Wyatt caused a disqualification when he attacked uh, Randy Orton behind. Uh, looked like Bray and Luke Harper had the other hand. And then I think Bray, Bray Wyatt opened the coffin and Kane was in there. Because <laughs> why not? Do you think we're heading towards a casket match of some <laughs> kind here? Oh, probably, yeah. Casting matches are weird. Um, and stupid as well. <laughs> stupid and weird, yeah. Uh, so yeah, Kane is some magician. He's, he can disappear out of nowhere, just like his brother. <laughs> um, yeah, that was super weird, but cool enough, I guess. Yeah, sure. I, I do think it's going a bit far now. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Well, I mean, I've been bullshit. a bit of a supporter <laughs> of the weird stuff, but uh, there's only so much I can take. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, so after that, um, Aja Styles had like a backstage interview. Um, uh, having up his match against James Ellsworth late in the match with style. Um, mm-hmm. late in the night, rather. And so losing to him would be worse than David Arquette winning the WTW title. Yeah, I love that reference. <laughs> yeah, I did. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, um, that's probably right as well. <laughs> and it was a good, AJ Styles is so amazing. Like, yes. we say it every single week on this podcast pretty much, but he really is and he's, he's embraced the role that he's been given in WWE. Like, and just, just, just ran with it. Yeah. Like the professional totally. that he is. And I think he's doing such an amazing job. And it obviously, shows that because he's the champion and obviously they trust him enough to put the belt on him and all that sort of thing. So yeah. um, I can't speak highly enough of AJ. He's excellent. Yeah, I agree. Phenomenal. Phenomenal, yes. <laughs> Pun intended. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, so after that we had a match uh, with Alexa Bliss versus Naomi. Uh, which was much better than the match at um, No Mercy. Um, yeah, can it was great. I, um, can I just interrupt? Yeah. Anybody who fights Naomi doesn't get an, a TV entrance. That's true, yeah. Because Naomi's... Entrance is like 10 minutes long. <laughs> yeah, it's like WWE loves Naomi's entrance. Yeah. So they want to... David Tunga loves her entrance. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he, he really it. does. <laughs> yeah. I think he's in love with her. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. Maybe. I think, yeah, uh, Jimmy, Jimmy, was Jimmy or Jay? Jimmy. Jimmy. So yeah, Jimmy needs to have a word with him, I think. But um, <laughs> David Tunga's got a, an Oscar winning wife. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Bizarre. Um, but yeah, it was a good match. I liked it. Although um, I do think Jennifer Hudson's, Hudson is probably not as attractive as Naomi. Shrug. I don't know what it looks like, to be honest. Yeah. I'll, I'll Google a picture while uh, you're talking. Cool. Uh, so, yeah, Alexa was dressed as uh, Freddy Krueger, which I thought was cool. Uh, Halloween reference. Yeah, I missed the pigtails, I have to be honest. Yeah, it's true. Pigtails are nice, but it's cool. But yeah, much better than Master No Mercy. Uh, Alexa ended up winning with uh, Sparkle Splash, slash, whatever it's called now, uh, Twisted Bliss. Twisted Bliss. Yep. I thought it was the right decision because, you know, she's just a number one contender. She needs to win. She needs to look strong. Uh, okay, so this is David Atunga's wife. Okay. Oh, yeah. This is right. It's fine. But, uh, yeah. I Do you think she's as nice as Naomi? Mm, I don't know. Naomi's probably a bit nicer. <laughs> TBH. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, know, who knows? Okay, I, so here's a picture of Naomi. <laughs> With uh, her bum to the camera. Because, yeah. <laughs> well, that's all I could find. It was like the first picture. <laughs> Look. I think about all, about all of these. <laughs> yep, all, literally all the pictures on Google Images are just her with a bunch of camera. Yeah, it looks like it. <laughs> I mean, so, you, you, you can blame her. Sh- show off what you got. <laughs> See, that's three yep. pictures. Three. Wait, here we go again. Three in a row. Four in a row. Come fly with me, that one says. I'm not sure why. Huh, weird. All right. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Um, so yeah, after that we had... Uh, Oh, wow, nice, okay. Uh, <laughs> bikini there. We need to stop looking at uh, baby pictures of uh, <laughs> distracting us from the podcast. On that one. Jesus Christ, that's got to be Photoshop, surely. 
She looks like the front cover of 300, the movie. <laughs> yes, just a bit. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After the ladies' match, we have uh, Apollo Crews versus the debuting uh, Kurt Hawkins, supposedly, debuting match. Good um, entrance. Good entrance. Yep, I like it. Uh, still no match, though. He taunted um, Apollo Crews, uh, got a punch in the face, and then walked off. His uh, basically Eve Marie 2.0 at this point. Yeah, I, I'm, <laughs> I, I quite like what they're doing here. Yeah. Um, because eventually he's gonna, he's obviously gonna have to have a match. <laughs> I want this entrance to catch on. Uh, you know when yeah. he sort of does a little promo at the beginning and turns to the hard camera and says Kurt <laughs> yeah. Hawkins? Well, I, I want actually. that to catch on so the crowd do it. Yeah. Because I think uh, he's Kurt really Hawkins. good on the mic and he looks the part and I'm, I'm already invested in Kurt Hawkins now and I really like him. Yeah, I like him. Um, so, uh, I wanna see, I wanna, I'm interested to see where they go with it. Yeah. I like it. Good stuff. Um, Tap Apollo that you didn't get a match. But. Yeah, I'm sorry. I feel so sorry for Apollo. He's yeah. lost in limbo at the minute. Yeah, it's like um, what we talking about just now. Yeah, it is. <laughs> um, but he should be challenging for Same the IC name. title and stuff like that. And it's, I, I know not everybody can, and I, I get that. So I mean, yeah. my moaning might be sort of unwarranted, but you know, that these guys have to be. You have to be fighting for something, otherwise, what's the point? Yeah, I agree. Like, if you're not fighting to be ch- uh, a champion of some kind, then what's, what What are you actually fighting for? Yeah. It's like going like a feud or anything. It's yeah, no he's, feel not, he's, not, he's got literally nothing. Yeah. It's strange. Poor Valo. Um, there's a surprisingly decent segment between Carmella and uh, Nikki. Yeah, I enjoyed this. Thought Tiny it was pants. good. Yeah. Um, I would to Carmella bring up the fact that she's, uh, her boyfriend is John Cena, and she's using that to like get to the top and all that. I like this feud. Yeah, and I, I think Carmella's been really good. I think she's been a, an, an excellent heel. She's yeah. she's taken that role and really sort of embraced it. And I think that's uh, I think that's that's good for her because the other stuff wasn't flying with the crowd, at least yeah. not the big crowd. I mean, in NXT it's fine, but NXT um, two two. Have you seen that entrance on WWE yeah, yeah. seventeen? Yeah, it's bad, isn't it? It's so bad. <laughs> Can you change it? Is there another sort of Carmella motion in creating entrance? I uh, might be able to. I, I hope just... so because I can't. I can't even. I, I, I like the F A B O. Whatever the F A B U S L O U S, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like that bit, and I can watch her sort of walk out. But then, as soon as she goes, my name's Carmel. I'm like, nope, 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 skip. nope, nope, nope. <laughs> yeah, same. But uh, yeah, good segment. They had a funny uh, video package of uh, like edited parts from Total Bellas, yeah, where uh, uh, Nikki's just asked, like grabbing John every five minutes and asking him for money and stuff. <laughs> I thought it was funny. Um, I called it a gold digger and all that, and yeah, uh, yeah it's good. Built up the feud nicely. And uh, yeah, yeah. See, this is a f- see. I'm happy with this feud. Yeah, it's because a feud. People, people they about. they have only wrestled on the pay per view. Exactly. Yeah, it's like once, once and twice. Yeah, and I'm, and that's how it should be. The rest of it's been sort of verbal sparring or Carmella yeah. attacking or Nikki attacking. And I think that's the way to do it. Yeah, I agree. Um, so then then the girls have got it right. Yeah, I Rather agree. Them. Good, good, good women say good. Uh, yeah, <laughs> good. Um, yes. Uh, so <laughs> after that, we had a match between uh. The Miz and the Spirit Squad still hanging on, still getting paid, uh, versus Dolph Ziggler and Heath and Rhino. And it was a bit rubbish, really. Do you think uh, we're going to see the Spirit Squad's challenge for the tag team titles there? I hope not. They're I think we are. I think that's what this is going. Uh, but Morgan Alpha weren't even on this week. Neither were, like, the attention, or neither were, uh, 12 villains. So we've got actual tag teams there, which really good, and you're not using them. And you've got bloody, bloody Heath and Rhino who aren't really tag team and versus the third squad who haven't been around for 30 years I think after the spirit squad have lost their tag team title opportunity which they'll get I'm (laughs) I'm I'm, I'm going with this Uh, Uh, I think then we'll see um, the likes of the Usos they weren't on either were they or were they Usos weren't on either wow Uh, okay so American (laughs) Alpha Vaud Villains the Ascension I thought they were going somewhere with the Ascension yeah I thought they were because they kept turning up every now and again like a new face paint look yeah I hope they do yeah I hope they do they deserve better yeah, but I think the Spirit Squad are going to get there. I think they're going to be around for a bit. No, I hope not. <laughs> Do you really not like them that much? Um, I mean, they're fine, but they're not, they're not as good as like actual current tag teams. I want to see American Alpha every week. I want to see the Usos every week. I want to see four villains, not for the Spirit Squad. An outdated tag team which nobody likes when they were around. And it was pointed out in commentary, they were tag team champions 10 whole years ago. <laughs> yeah, bloody hell. Jesus Christ. Where's the time gone? Uh, but yeah, Heath is later getting pinned by I think one of the members of the Spirit Squad. So there's some tension there between Rhino and Heath building because Heath's lost a match. He's seen all his loss so far. And Heath Rhino's the one who keeps winning. That's just very true. 
Yep. The uh, very fact that they got pinned by one of the members of the Spirit Squad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, tells you that the Spirit Squad are going to go for the tag team titles. Yeah, you probably won't. They earn a pinfall victory over the tag team champions. Yeah. There, there is going to be a special episode of SmackDown, isn't there? Where it's like, you know, a pay-per-view quality before Survivor Series. So yeah, we're going to see AJ Styles defend the world title against Dean Ambrose. Probably. Maybe like, uh, a, maybe like a three-hour spectacular special SmackDown Live yeah. thing. We'll see Nikki Carmella. We'll see Alexa versus Becky again. Yeah. I don't know. What, what, that's how I see it going. I'm not saying that's what's definitely going to happen, but um, anyway. we'll see this casket match between the Wyatts and... <laughs> Randy Orton and Kane for whatever reason. Yeah, bizarre. That's what we'll, I think that's what we're sort of building towards here. Yeah, but anyway. Um, so I've got a match between, uh, yes, another match between Baron Corbin and Jack Swagger, which I skipped because I was running out of time because we've seen this match under times already. So who cares? We didn't need to skip it. Baron won. Because you know? it was a minute 45. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> wow. Uh, Baron Corbin beat Jack Swagger, squashed him in that amount of time. Good. So Jack Swagger, SmackDown's new big acquisition it's one of the stones, baby. Yeah, woo. he's doing nothing and is already relegated to how he was on Raw. Yep, pretty much. What is the point? What was the point? Yep. Nobody cares about you, Swagger. Sorry. Um, <laughs> there's so much potential. If you're booked right, anybody can be good. Uh, yeah. Jack Swagger's a big guy. He's got the look. He's got the ability, but nobody cares about him. Yeah, um, it's about time for a new gimmick, I think, before Swagger. Don't be surprised turn, if Jack Swagger's in the next batch of releases. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, so yeah, that brings us to our main events. Uh, Jose Stars versus James Ellsworth. James Ellsworth, he's going to say, uh, for the WWE title. That offspring tattoo that James Ellsworth has <laughs> is terrible. It's pretty bad. Um, yeah, so Dean, Dean Average was at ringside. Of course he was. Yeah, um, of course. He's a funny guy. He was like guest uh, ring announcer and guest uh, timekeeper and all that. Uh, he's gone to the mic for five minutes shouting AJ distracting him it's always funny um, so yeah, AJ had the upper hand but it was all the match uh, at one point he went for a chin lock which that missed as lower because he went oh yeah I've got a chin so I thought that I thought that was funny <laughs> okay. yeah um, at one point uh, David Chunga called it a chin that got the win I thought it was quite funny good job Chunga wow yeah <laughs> um he getting thrown out the ring. One point, he got thrown out the ring by AJ and Dina threw him back in. AJ threw him out. He threw him back in. <laughs> that was funny. Um, uh, then uh, Dean distracted him, distracted AJ again. Um, AJ was like up on the, the turnbuckle. Ellsworth pulled him off. He sits his face on the like turnbuckle, turned around, and Ellsworth hit him with like an awesome looking uh, sweet chin music or no chin music, as they called it. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, always got like a two, close two count on him as well. <laughs> the crowd went nonsense like holy shit holy shit um, but yeah it, so unfortunately AJ Styles ended up getting himself disqualified so no title change but Ellsworth did win again against AJ Styles for a DQ um, mm-hmm. and then there's a dirty lead after the match just to venture off to make Dean okay. Um <laughs> I have no problem this. with this James Ellsworth thing like yeah. I said last week the internet James Ellsworth owes a lot to the internet wrestling community <laughs> yeah um, seriously for memeing him and all this sort of stuff. And um, I'm glad he's, you know, he's done what he's been asked to do. And he's done it um, in a very comedic, very funny way. Yeah. But um, I'm happy now, hopefully, to see the back of him. Yeah. Uh, Where's Cena gone? I think he's off filming a movie or something. Okay. Yeah. Um, because I want to see the Dean Ambrose-John Cena feud. Yeah, I do. Yeah, they're, like, yeah, they're like building it up for ages. It'll make it look really awesome. Now Cena's like buggered off somewhere to do a movie. Oh, great. Ambrose will lose to AJ Styles again then they'll carry on I think yeah I think you're right good prediction um, so yeah the crowd was super into the match so that's something uh, it's like James Ellsworth I can't even say his name James Ellsworth Jesus Christ James Ellsworth thank you you say for me they like him a lot <laughs> <laughs> the crowd was super into him so he's that sweet chin music that was awesome um, but yeah he ended up winning but didn't win the title good <laughs> yeah, I mean that, that, and that's all I need to see of James Ellsworth now. I think yeah. it's time he's had his fifteen minutes. Um, time for you to go and to do autograph signings mm-hmm. and um, go wrestling in the Indies. Sorry, go wrestling in the Indies. Yeah, go, go be a comedy act in the Indies. Yeah, and all that sort of stuff. You're gonna be people are gonna know who you are for a long, long time now. So yeah, yeah. Uh, don't. I don't want to see you on my TV screen anymore. Basically, harsh. <laughs> oh, sh- um, but yeah, I thought it's cool. Oh, do you want to see him anymore? Not really. No. <laughs> but I thought he was good last. I thought he was a funny guy. He's funny. And yeah. he's done what he needed to do and that's that's basically it. Yeah. 
So yeah, there's no game. Okay, SmackDown, nothing great. Same well. Yeah. Um, kind of an average week of wrestling. Hell in a Cell needs to happen now so that we can sort of move on from it, hopefully. Yeah. We're we'll um, going to talk about next week. Like, nothing's happening. <laughs> exactly. That, 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 that's, that's, that's what's baffling about it. Yeah. Like, what is actually going to be on Raw next week? Yeah. Because bizarre. we've had all the build that we need. They've had to resort to showing Russo's family in <laughs> photo form yeah. for us to just to have that feud on the show. It's like, I mean, Rusev got the better of Reigns this week. Reigns will get the better of Rusev next week going into the pay-per-view. That's just... That's how it works, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly how it works. And Reigns will win at the pay-per-view. Yep. Then what happens to Rusev? And these are questions that will be answered on future episodes of the Sunny Infant Show. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Just stay here on the future on SoundCloud or wherever it is. Lifted. So this Go podcast, n- you know, has been marred with problems. Um, <clears throat> yes. And if we'd have done this whole podcast... Uh, with that original echo oh thing, God. this podcast wouldn't exist this week. It wouldn't. We would have, We'd to have given up and just started again next week. Yeah. But you have a podcast, yes, and I hope, thankfully. in your opinion, it was the greatest <laughs> podcast of all time. Yeah, that's what I'm calling this episode. The greatest podcast ever. Good. Yeah. <laughs> thank you very much for persevering with us and listening to our podcast. Uh, yes, we hope thank you. you enjoyed it, as always. Um, please do subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, follow us on SoundCloud. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Boys and girls, this is the Sunny and Finn Show. We are a weekly wrestling and video game podcast that we posts are. every single Friday across podcast services everywhere except Google Play and Spotify. <laughs> yeah. This has been episode 35 of the Sunny and Finn Show. Yay. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs> we are now going to go and just like take <laughs> a deep breath. See, wonder yeah. what the hell was going on yeah. and regroup <laughs> for sure yeah <laughs> but oh, for now yeah. I'm Sunny. I'm Finn and we'll speak to you next week guys goodbye thank you much goodbye